Hi guys, welcome back for another one. Today I am getting a day 900 roster review by Maverick Ag06, who you guys might know from my roster review series here on YouTube. So without further ado, I am gonna let Maverick Ag take over this roster review and steer what direction he would like to go and talk about my roster. And Maverick, take it away. All right, so first things first, let's kind of talk about, or have you, if you'll tell me kind of, um, you know, what your, what your approach to roster building is at this point, because obviously you've already made your way through Dark Dimension 4 one time, you're working through it a second time, so the, the, build, the roster is not being prepping for Dark Dimension, and you've completed all the other content in the game, which is different than what I've known you as, is, is the build for content guy. Yeah. So now that you're basically built for all the content, what does roster building look like for you? Uh, so now it is, I mean, it's kind of weird though, because we're looking at, so you, you mentioned Dark Dimensions beaten and Doom Raids, uh, even though I'm still not able to solo an entire lane by myself, I'm in a pretty good position with Doom Raids compared to uh, my Alliance. Like I, I feel like I, I'm, you know, I'm not probably not top of the chart, but I'm definitely uh, not in the bottom half of the chart. So uh, what it looks like for me right now is I still have a somewhat focus on Doom Raids, uh, the level five ISO requirement. Uh, so far, we're recording this on a Thursday. We get a dev log here on Friday. They may walk that back, but there is some indication that they may not be walking that back at all. The 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 idea that that uh, that we're going to have to uh, look at everyone's rosters based off of ISO. Uh, is uh, going to change things up a lot. But I want to go through... We'll talk about ISO more towards the end. I just want to go through everything. Let's just what, assume best-case scenario as it, 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 the game is going to stay with the restrictions as they are yeah. right now. All right. So here's my... So here it is. I'm going to start over a spreadsheet for you guys right, real quick. So this is my current plan. This is the focus around Doom Raid. So what I like to do... Uh, starting Sunday, beginning of the week, is invest something in one of these characters that are not, where it says no longer needed. So maybe it'll be like a level or a gear tier in one of these characters, right? You know, Sunday, we start Sunday, you know, I make sure I don't overspend the high roller milestone and just go through these characters. So that's each one, just a little bit of improvement every week. So that way I can improve my performance on Doom Raids. And I'm talking about ISO farming right now, I'm currently farming specifically just controllers and support as that's the only two classes I do not have to level five on, on my specific Doom Raid character. So that starts the week off. Now that's usually done probably even before half week, you know, even through or through Wednesday or something like that. And then after that, I slide, I'm gonna slide that out of the way. And then I go and I focus on balancing out teams currently at the moment since I'm done with Dark Dimension uh, before it was Dark Dimension. So currently what I'm working on, let's go versus tag. This is kind of what everything I'm working on or characters. I need to update their stats in msf.gg for my alliance. And, you know, if I'm sharing my roster with like Maverick. Uh, yeah. So this is currently what's going on. So right now I am working on balancing out Shadowlands to give me a good war offense team. Uh, so that's currently on the slate since I already started that project. But after that project's over, I will be sliding to X Factors. You guys can see them uh, here on the bottom of my my current projects. And that's pretty much now, it. Now, talking about X Factor, if you'll slide back down to sure. X Factor real quick. It does not look like, I mean, I, I, it's possible, but it does not look like you're going to be getting unlocking Adam Warlock on a first pass. Uh, nope, unless they make players super farmable quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you're not going to buy the strike pass, and that yeah, even if you bought the strike pass, you still wouldn't have enough shards yeah. for, for Polaris um, to do that. So I get that you're building that for future content yes. of unlocking Adam Warlock on a second pass. Yes, which is which is a, which is a smart thing to do. Okay, so let's go back to the to the top end of your roster. All righty, so. My word, you have the best character at the game at seven stars. Like, or you will have her at seven red stars. <laughs> yeah, at like some point, yeah. <laughs> six, six red stars. Um, I know I know she's really good. What's it like at the very, very top of the Kestrel food, food chain? Oh, man. It's you. If you don't have her, you honestly. Uh, I like to open up like when I do arena or even RTA with her. I like opening up with the special because I feel like this. I feel like it's GG once the special's off, depending on the team comp you're facing. But in most cases, mm -hmm. the game's over. And just using the spe open up the special and not just nuking one character. Uh, that's my favorite thing to do with her. But yeah, definitely, uh, oh, she's worth the red stars once you're able to invest in her. Well, I'll, I'll just say this: I like you. You have the top end Kestrel. My Kestrel is 
is a nice solid five gold, yellow three red. Yeah. And she puts in the work, but like it's not as easy as, as it is for, for some people. So I just, I was curious because like, you know, G 15, seven red or well, now six red, but eventually going to be seven red. That's got to feel like you're way ahead of the curve on the, on the meta. Um, it's good to see that. I'm assuming you're using her everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about team composition. What are you putting around her? Uh, team comp. It's usually, uh, RTA is pretty, it's honestly, it's pretty simple and it's probably the worst thing, but honestly, it's the only thing you really do to defend yourself. Uh, pairing her with Emma and Zemo, uh, RTA didn't, it depends on what the daily objectives are, whatever two characters match. If I can get both of them in, in one shot, I usually just throw them on the team. Usually that's good enough to win, uh, 90% yeah. of the time. Uh, arena, uh, I bounced back and forth. I tried the Emma Zemo thing in arena. It didn't seem like it was getting me as much wins as i'm gonna show you guys the team that i do use against most of them which is weird i don't i didn't expect it to actually work as well as it does it is this one right here with phoenix surfer hella doc Ock, and kestrel for some reason that seems to work a lot better than having zemo and emma don't know why it so just this does. is this is this is for your offense yes okay would you do me a favor real quick yep. and go into your arena shard and so we can see kind of what you're facing every day in arena Um, here we go. Yes, this is what we got. Okay, so this is not this is not atypical. I mean, what I'm seeing, uh, rank 23 is kind of what you used to see all the time, all across the board. Yeah. In in uh, arena, rank 20 is kind of a hybrid of what you're seeing from people that don't have doom. Yeah. And then if you're in a shard like mine, where every character or every player in the top 100 has doom unlocked. What you're seeing is what uh, the the guy at level 21 is showing off. Yeah. And I think that is the best combination uh, for defense and the best combination for offense as well. Okay. Um, because because it's the best way to go in and actually beat that specific team. And I don't even have to have a fully. Uh, I, I have baby doom like you do with the yeah. the non the non second rotation full doom. So I just have a baby doom. And I I can punch up 100k or 110k with the, with that exact same team composition going into into that. So the the Zemo Kestrel Surfer Emma Frost uh, Doctor Doom. It's probably like a 50 to 75 percent um, punch up win on, on it. It really yeah. honestly comes down to who Zemo goes first. Yes. <laughs> if you get if your Zemo goes first you're in good shape. You ability block their Zemo. Then you try to kill their weakest member um, with Kestrel, get the two-turn ability block on Doom, and delete Doom with the Kestrel ultimate, and then you're in good shape and you win. That's realistically how you do it. Okay. And, like, the one in level 20 is even easier because there is no Doom and you can just skip Ebony Maw because he's not a problem. So I would consider trying to run that a little bit on Arena Offense. Uh, the Emma Zemo Surfer Kestrel Doom okay. version. Right. That 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 seems to have the most success um, at the really high end arena. Okay. There is a different version that has Dad Bros, but your Dad Bros are under 10k, so I wouldn't bother with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Where are you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was want I just remember I didn't put a disclaimer kind of in the beginning of this video, so I kind of just want to add it now. Um, so you guys are wondering, uh, I know my channel name is Mr. Free to Play MSF, but I am actually no longer a hundred percent free to play player. This past, uh, December, mid December, I broke my free to play after I conquered all content in the game, which at the time was only DD three. And I kind of went into investing characters that I really want to build up right away. And that's why, uh, I have my astonishing X-Men probably more developed than most. I have, uh, Kestrel and Surfer developed more than most because uh, those are characters that I have spent in. That's the only characters I've spent in this point, but I just want to throw that out there to make sure there's no confusion um, that I'm being transparent with my roster and spending. All right. Sure. No, that makes sense. Let's go ahead and since we're since we're doing that, I'll come back and I'll, ask, I'll continue on Kestrel in a second. But since you brought it up, let's talk about the reason that you stopped spending. Why don't you pull up your Astonishing X-Men? Okay. Boom. All right. All right. So this is... 
kind of what I have typically seen out of an astonishing X Men team. How do you feel like they're working um, as they're currently constructed? I have one issue with it, but I want to hear you talk about it first. Uh, so the, I guess, I mean, overall, they're a fantastic team. One of the things that the I guess a little pet peeve when it comes to this team is I find some of their abilities, are, like the things they do are kind of, they they don't always work the, in the order you want them to. Like uh, they're because of their turn meter. Bishop never gets charged, so his ultimate's never hitting for the max amount of damage. Uh, there's times where uh, some things just go off, and it's like, well, that's really not needed. Um, so it's little things like that. They're really overstacked on debuffs, um, except for defense down. If they had defense down, they'd probably be unstoppable, but that's another argument. But yeah, that's kind of my thing there. Some of it some of it because of their abilities, that some of their other abilities, they just you never get to make really make use of them. Like like Iceman stun, like it's really never needed. What are you using? I know I'm assuming you're 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 autoing pretty much everything in Ultima Seven with them and doing really well in raids with them. What are you using them on in war? What are you attacking with? Um, or do you, do you throw them on your defense? No, I use them on offense. Most of the time, I do target uh, big Doc Ox with them. Uh, that seemed to be very sure. successful. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Ever, uh, I did try them against uh, a small Heroes, like, a, like it was a 100k punch down on Heroes for Hire, um, just in our current war right now, and I failed. Uh my very first, it's my very first attempt and very first experience attacking them. Uh, Iron Fist just kept healing and I just couldn't kind of overcome him constantly healing the person I was targeting. So, all right. So next thing, Bishop. And from what I've always known, Bishop needs to be, and should be the biggest character in this entire, in this entire team. Yeah. Are you planning on taking him to level 80 G15, getting him up there with Kitty and Jubilee? I, I do believe so. He takes Judas Bullets, which there's no other character in the game that I really need that unique for. So I do feel like he eventually in that, in that weekly investment, he'll get there. Okay. Um, the other thing that I see about this team that I would recommend to you is I would recommend you consider flopping um, some of your ISOs. More specifically, Kitty, Pride, and Bishop. Okay. I feel like they have the exact opposite of what they should have. Okay. And I know why you I know why you did the striker on Kitty Pride because you did it right when they first came out. I remember watching you. You you were in my alliance when you built this team, yeah. and you took pretty much all five of the astonishing X Men to level five ISO immediately, and just went off the initial recommendations. And the initial recommendations were Kitty Pride clears debuffs. She put her striker, she does skirt striker, skirmish or striker, and gets two turns to clear all the debuffs. It made sense. Yeah. Now with blue ISO, she's going to be able to clear more more debuffs just out of being a skirmisher and get all that additional focus that the skirmisher ISO gives you yeah. to clear those debuffs. So the idea that you would use that striker attack to clear debuffs when she can do that as a skirmisher is probably better and then that way you can turn right around and give Bishop the additional damage and allow him to attack more frequently, which will boost the amount of damage output. Because realistically speaking, it's a control team and there is one damage dealer. You're, the best character on the team is Bishop because he does all the damage and he tanks. Yeah. So having him the biggest really makes your Astounding Ninja X-Men better. That would that would be my recommendation here, and I know you you probably knew all this because you are you are definitely an astonishing X Men guy, <laughs> um, but just in terms of like moving forward into blue ISO and um, using this using this team in all game modes, I feel like there's going to be a version of this where um, you would drop, in your case, you would drop Iceman, toss in that seven red star kestrel and use it to one shot uh heroes for higher teams okay i've definitely seen that happen All right. um or you get rid of Iceman or or kitty in your case i would keep the kitty and drop yeah. the Iceman. uh put it in kestrel and then if bishop is the highest damage and the highest health he's going to be tanking every all the all of the hits at the beginning from heroes for higher It'll allow Kestrel to get going, and you can bully your way through that way on Heroes for Hire. Right. I've not seen that work at every level, but you seem to have the the power level and the stars to make that work. All right, all right, sounds awesome. Man. I'll give that a try. Now, since we're talking about Kestrel, so like, 
let's go back to your to your roster and let's kind of look and see the best ways to use to maximize these resources and just okay. in terms of team composition. So Kestrel, you can do any number of ways. We've obviously talked about her with Astonishing X-Men. Um, let's talk about uh, using her to beat heroes for hire. So you've got the Astonishing X-Men as an option, but I also see a fantastic Silver Surfer there. Yeah. Um, will you will you throw up your Inhumans, please? Sure. Because it seems to be the the number one counter for uh, Heroes for Hire right now it seems to be Kestrel, Silver Surfer, and the big three Inhumans of Black Bolt, which you have a really good Black Bolt Crystal. You put some decent investment in, and then Yo Yo. Yeah. Um, now that Yo Yo has become farmable, what are we, what are your thoughts about the Inhumans team and maybe building up your uh, Yo Yo? Uh, I haven't. I mean, I like I'm a like. I made a like I've been made aware of this counter recently, and so I haven't really given it much thought because it's like, do I push aside another project to push her up? I mean, her being farmable is great, and it really does make me. I mean, I'm definitely gonna uh, if I see her in the raid store, I'm definitely buying her. Right, I'm gonna get the stars on her. Uh, so yeah. looking at her gear tier ten, level sixty seven. Uh, no T4 is currently invested and just level one ISO. Um, I mean, I definitely, like I said, as I keep balancing out war teams, cause right now that that's kind of my side goal was balance out war teams while I have nothing else really to focus on until there's new content. So I, I, right. I, I do see this on the docket, but, uh, I mean, I could push X factor back. Let, let me, let me yeah. make a recommendation and it's sure, not going to be a crazy, I'm not, I don't, I don't want you to like, throw her up to gt15 right now yeah. <laughs> but i mean obviously your your h your your two your two raid store farms from vinegar five stars yeah level 12 uh, or excuse me a gear tier 12 level 71 give her a little bit of that extra focus yeah uh you know maybe even if you have just enough iso i know level two iso does not really help that much but it's still 10 percent uh health yeah and throwing her as, as part of that team you don't need her to to do a whole lot other than toss out some offense downs, give out give out um, the ability energy to Black Bolt, and not just die absolutely immediately um, in order to make that 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 work. Because so much of what that counter is is Black Bolt becomes the tank because he's the highest health and the highest damage, which allows Surfer to strip uh, the uh, charges with his ultimate, and then Kestrel will start killing people. Okay. So the Inhumans are basically there to provide some sort of sustain for your really big Kestrel and your really big Silver Surfer. Okay, all right. It's something to consider as like a very moderate investment that yeah. might take you a day, but would help your team or your team, your alliance, uh, in the inevitable <laughs> need to kill like twenty four uh, heroes for higher teams. Oh right, yeah. I'll put- I want to I put the versus tag on because it's only it's only really her that needs something. And you're right, that won't that's a that's that's a day worth of investment. Yeah, at best, <laughs> and it, it doesn't really it does not really sidetrack you at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the top end of your roster. We've kind of talked about Kestrel and the different uses for her. Yeah. Uh, we started to talk a little bit about Surfer. What are you currently using Surfer in or with? Uh, um, with. Uh, it's, not really anything. I think right now, just like as a blitz team, I have him paired with Invisible Woman, and I think I have Doom still on that team because I, I just put him there while I was building him up. And now that he's built, I don't know what I'm putting him. But and there's just like right. two random characters. Are you using him in Arena? Yes, Arena definitely. Okay. Um, RTA not so much, but Arena yes. Well, uh, he, currently he's he's banned in RTA, but that, uh, yeah, that I, I get that. Um, <laughs> So war, where do you, where do you have him sitting in war? Uh, war, I'm see. Here's the thing, and I don't I don't know if we're getting into war here later or not. I'm letting you control the ship, but I I have Kestrel Surfer and uh, Doom. I think there's like three big names, all designated for war offense. And I I'd be lying half the time. The war ends, and I didn't even use those characters. Yeah, so that's a problem. So <laughs> that and it's and and, and quite honestly. Um, you're going to start using them more, especially if you put together that um, Heroes for Hire counter, the more, like, once everybody has a chance to get Misty Knight unlocked uh, through Blitz this yeah. weekend or, you know, 
through in the next month or so like that's only yeah. something that's going to get better and definitely don't don't go a war without using silver surfer and kestrel like yeah. i would definitely not recommend that and if it's really still getting down to the point maybe tossing him on defense for a war or two a until you start needing him. Yeah. Well, the I mean, might not be a terrible idea. Yeah. Not not a permanent thing, but like yeah. a couple wars, maybe toss him on defense so that he at least gets used. Yeah. When I first unlocked him, they were on defense. And then when Heroes for Hire was announced, especially once Missy Knight's offers can you know, came in my my lines kinda asked that everyone remove those characters from their defense. Sure. So we had them ready for offense. And I, I even at our level we still haven't run across a lot of Heroes for Hire. Like it's not like the, like the, the lines that were facing majority of them bought heroes for hire so we they're still not prevalent yet but once you get through both of these rotations i'm expecting it to be fully prevalent in everyone's uh war i i agree at the gold four platinum one level you're looking at probably at best a quarter to a third of the players in the, the opposing alliance have a heroes for hire team yeah so you're looking at anywhere from like four to eight uh heroes for hire teams that you have to, to worry about um, but yeah, I mean, eventually everybody is going to probably want to keep Surfer on offense with Kestrel to battle here as for hire, at least until Infinity Watch comes out. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got this really nice Nick Fury that you can pair with Kestrel as well. Yeah. So.